Well, I love it. That's a great intro into the into the book. Before we get any further, maybe we could define a, a couple terms. How should we think about virtue today or define it? Yeah, that's a good question because one of the problems with virtue and writing about virtue is that most people in the Western world, at least, if they hear the word virtue, they hear something stuffy and something that is clearly influenced by 2,000 years of Christian tradition. So they start thinking about purity and chastity and things like that. No, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Those are virtues. Those are part of the, some of the Christian virtues, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Greco-Roman virtues. Uh, there were a number of them. Aristotle lists 12, I think, for instance. But the four fundamental ones are practical wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Practical wisdom is the knowledge of what is really good and what is not good for you. So what, what should be your objectives, your goals, your, your priorities, things like that. That's practical wisdom. Courage is the courage to do the right thing, even though it may cost you. Justice is what tells you what that right thing is, and typically it boils down to behaving towards other people the way in which you would like them to behave toward you, so with fairness, with respect, etc. Et and then temperance is a matter of doing things in the right amount, neither too much nor too little. So that's the, that's the kinds of things we're, we're talking about. Now, virtues are character traits, and a character trait is essentially a disposition to act in a certain way, regardless of circumstances. There is some modern research that is actually put into question the, the very notion of virtue. A lot of psychologists have argued that actually people react to circumstances very differently, not in any kind of predictable way that would indicate the existence of, a, of an underlying virtue. But then more recent research turns out to sort of cut down to size those kind of findings. So it turns out that, yes, that it is true that people do respond to circumstances differently, sometimes unpredictably, because they're responding to things that they are not even aware of. And I'll give you an example in just a second. But it is also true that, you know, if you are described typically by your friends as generous, meaning that you spend your time or maybe even your money helping other people, then more or less it will be true that that's what you do regardless of circumstances. You might not do it all the time. You might not do it consistently you know, to the same level. But if you are described as a generous person, that means that more likely than not, you will, in fact, act generously. The exceptions here are interesting, however. And so the typical exceptions are situations where psychologists have demonstrated that factors that we're not even aware of will markedly influence our behavior in either positive or negative ways. For instance, the bystander effect. The bystander effect is a situation where if you are, let's say, in a, in a shopping mall or in a you know, kind of a public place and you see somebody in distress, like you know, on the floor, for instance, clearly ha having some kind of physical problem, you are much more likely to intervene if you're alone or if you're not surrounded immediately by, by people than if you're surrounded by people, none of whom does anything. If you are part of a crowd and nobody's doing anything, you will very likely not intervene. And likely the reason you won't intervene is because you, you start thinking, wait a minute, why is nobody else doing anything here? Maybe there is a trick. Maybe this is a situation where I shouldn't be doing anything. If I start doing something, then I'm going to look like a fool. And you don't want to look like a fool, so you're not going to do anything. Right? Now, that has nothing to do with virtues or character. It just has to do with a particular situation. You are alone versus you are in the company of people who are not doing anything. But the good news is that research also shows that if people are made aware of the bystander effect, that is, they're told, look, Here's what happens under these circumstances. Then the next time that it happens to them, they say, oh, wait a minute. I'm being, I'm being actually, I'm behaving according to the bystander effect. I don't want to do that. There, there may actually be a person here in distress. And even if it's not the case, even if it's a joke, so what? After all, what's so embarrassing about, you know, trying to help somebody, even if other people don't do it. So the current research shows that Yes, there is such a thing as character and, and character dispositions, that is, virtues, but it's also true that these are very much 
affected by the circumstances in which we find ourselves, which means that we need to learn about those circumstances and the effect that they have on, on us.